The Grand Tour almost officially ended after this happened. Here in America, we are very fond of our auto restoration shows. For decades, we have had many amazing programs such as West Coast Choppers, Fast and Loud, Bad Chat Customs, Overhauling, Graveyard Cars, Bitchin' Rides, and many more. But for as much as we enjoy our auto shows over here, Great Britain has just as much of a love for them, if not more. One of their most popular shows, Top Gear, started in 1977 and has been going strong ever since. The creators of the show were Jeremy Clarkson, a popular English broadcaster and journalist, and Andy Willman, a popular English television producer. Top Gear inspired a number of other popular shows. One of them is a show called The Grand Tour. It was made exclusively for Amazon and its popular online streaming service Amazon Prime and premiered in November of 2016. It was created by Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, James May, and Richard Porter after they all left the production team at Top Gear. Of course, when a new show comes along, it gets a lot of hype during its first season. That period is also a pretty trying period for the show as well, almost being a bit of a make-it-or-break-it period. It was no different for the Grand Tour. There were a few speed bumps in the road during the first couple of seasons which made things challenging. But there were also a couple of other difficulties that this show faced, which nearly brought the show to an end before it really began. So, is the Grand Tour officially cancelled? Is Jeremy Clarkson's career over? Is the show scripted? No one has answered these questions… until now. Watch till the end of the video for a chance to win $1,000 cash, and be sure to subscribe, click the bell, and like this video for more crusty content. So, here are some things that almost brought the Grand Tour to a screeching halt. D2, please. Fire! <laughs> what was that? It was my limo! The show's format was nothing unique. One thing that the Grand Tour had going for it was that it brought over one of the biggest names in automotive TV history, Jeremy Clarkson. He was and still is a legend in the industry, having been involved with Top Gear for over 30 years. This was a big advantage for the new show as it brought over many of his dedicated fans. So as far as first seasons for shows go, the Grand Tour ended up doing very well for itself. However, this brought along its own set of problems that ended up catching up with it. When Amazon brought over Clarkson, Hammond, May, and Porter after their departure from Top Gear, they decided it would be best to ride the wave from the previous show and stick to the old style. So it followed much of the same format as Top Gear, including car reviews, timed laps, various challenges and races, studio segments, and celebrity guests. This continued for three seasons, with there being many times where the similarities between Top Gear and the Grand Tour were scarily similar. Now, it should be noted that viewers still enjoy Top Gear. However, they noticed that these similarities were a little too noticeable, and it ended up becoming mundane. It didn't make sense to many why there seemed to be the same show but with a different name and on a different channel. Towards the end of the second season and throughout the third season, viewership started going down. Although there were no official records that state this, you can consider something else. At the conclusion of the third season, the production team changed from this format and focused more on producing special films for future series. When this happened, viewership started going up again, all the way into the fourth season. It's definitely something to think about. I've seen more appetizing things than that stuck to the back of my terrier. A ru ruck, rubber hose pipe. Nice. Coated in napalm. <laughs> hell. They have too much money to spend with not enough creativity. So, this reason actually runs a little in tandem with the last reason. We've already made it obvious that the show wasn't exactly original. Viewers online reported that it seemed to be the same tired, stale, and sometimes forced version. Now, take that and combine it with an insanely huge budget. What you get is some really expensive, cheesy moments. The first episode had its share of feel-good and warm moments that made the viewers feel like the series could definitely go somewhere. However, once episode 2 came around, things definitely started to seem a little… off. Looking as if it were more of a Mission Impossible movie rather than a car show, the hosts actually pretended to die 
only to come back to life soon after. Then they went on a car chase. There were some big explosions and Jeremy got shot in his nuts. That's when it hit people that these producers have way too much money to play around with. The worst part about it is that this was only one example. There were three seasons of things just like this. Many viewers were left wondering whether the hosts were hosting a car show or auditioning for a movie. Episode after episode seemed like a scripted, overly dramatized Bollywood action movie. Luckily though, once the fourth season came around, the format changed and the episodes started getting quite a bit better. Viewers started coming back and ratings went up. I simply drive up, hop aboard, and then we'll be on our way. It feels like the production company is trying too hard. When the Grand Tour started, there were already a ton of fans who were excited to see Jeremy Clarkson in his element again. After all, he was an absolute powerhouse when it came to Top Gear, so there was already a pretty decent following going into it. But one thing that Clarkson had going for him on Top Gear was that it came naturally to him. He knew what the audience was looking for and he was able to effortlessly deliver. That wasn't really the case with the Grand Tour in the first couple of seasons. At first, there were a few people who started to actually question Clarkson himself. Had his production companies been scripting everything for him the whole time? Was he actually capable of doing a different show format other than what he had done for years on Top Gear? Was Clarkson even the right person to host a new show? All of these concerns were squashed and were only speculation. In reality, what people really saw was a production company that was trying too hard to make things more grandiose than the original show, while also cashing in on the fame that came with having Jeremy Clarkson as a host. There wasn't enough thought put in on the front end to make the show unique while letting the hosts do what they already knew how to do. Travelled extensively down through Italy. Um, Oh wait, no, I haven't been anywhere. That's what I meant to say. No, like absolutely everybody, um, I've been here on the farm um, ever since it began. COVID-19 really threw things for a loop. The Grand Tour debuted in late 2016 and continued for four seasons, despite having a bit of a rocky and questionable start. But in its fourth season, it wasn't immune from one of the world's most trying times in recent history, the COVID-19 pandemic. At the time of filming, there was still so much that was unknown about the virus, and no one really knew how to operate or prepare. But once it became evident that this pandemic was incredibly dangerous, production was immediately shut down and everyone returned to their homes to ride out the storm. It was only a few days after the Grand Tour cancelled filming that the United Kingdom issued lockdown orders, keeping everyone inside. Even with this, the cast members weren't immune from harm. Jeremy Clarkson was especially at risk for infection because he had many risk factors working against him, from being 60 years old to having a history of pneumonia. Clarkson recollected in an interview, Four days before Christmas, I woke in the night to find my sheets were soggy and that I had a constant dry cough. He had contracted the coronavirus. He reported very labored breathing and was especially concerned given his previous health struggles. Eventually, he was able to recover, but it wasn't without difficulty, both physically and mentally. Clarkson said that during his quarantine, time was his enemy. He knew that we understood very little about the disease and that there was next to no medicine available to help him battle anything except the symptoms. He didn't even know how to judge if he was better or not. It was a mental and physical prison that he simply couldn't escape. Eventually, though, he recovered and after a few months, restrictions lifted so that they could continue filming. In this time, though, there were so many things hanging in the air that people even wondered if the show would go on at all. Luckily, it did. Through all of these things, the Grand Tour endured and got to a place where people respect the show and will support it in the years to come. Hopefully, the momentum will carry on as the show has been off the air for some time. So, to answer the questions at the beginning of the video, is the Grand Tour officially cancelled? Well, Season 4 premiered in July 2021, and a Season 5 hasn't been announced, so I guess we'll have to find out and see. 
But make sure to subscribe to this channel to be notified when it does. About Jeremy Clarkson's career As long as he stays healthy, you should see new content from him for a while longer, which is great news for Top Gear fans. Lastly, is the Grand Tour scripted? Well, yes and no. While the sets are staged, what happens during the set is not as Jeremy Clarkson told RadioTimes.com. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. As promised, to enter the $1,000 cash giveaway, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, Tuna No Crust. Hit the notification bell, leave a like, and comment down below, No Crust Nation, with your cash app or Venmo. And that's it. We're also giving our viewers 10% off any Krusty Musty merch using code TUNA. And we'll see you next time.